What is happening? I don't know. It's what? Sunday. It is Sunday. Uh, it's really weird because it's been crazy hot here in Vegas and blue skies, blazing sun. But now it's like super windy and like overcast outside. It feels very strange. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's been hazy since yesterday and I'm, I'm not, it, but, but not raining so i'm trying to i there may be some wildfires in california that's contributing to the haze mm -hmm. i haven't really paid much attention so i'm not sure about that um i do see we have a couple of people in the chat so dakota flips first live with us i did see a comment on some of our videos yeah a couple videos new, ago new viewer so welcome welcome to the the circus we appreciate you watching now you said you stumbled upon us i'm curious how you found us did did youtube actually uh, decide that we were worthy of being suggested to people. I don't know. Or did know. somebody tell you about us? Sometimes, sometimes <laughs> it happens. We don't get suggested very often because we're just like not big enough, I guess. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty interesting. And then Alexis is in the chat several times now. Alexis, I don't know what's happening, what but we're happy on? to see your face or your name anyway. Not quite your face, but Alexis, how many shoes have you listed today? We we've, we've talked about Alexis a few times uh, recently talking about um you know feeding your stores feeding the algorithm uh and you know we, we use her as an example of someone you know she has a very set goal of 12 listings minimum per day every single day mm -hmm. i think seven days a week and she's seen great success with that um, she is very very niche down to just selling shoes um but she's very successful with that. And so she's definitely like one of the people who inspired us to like, yeah. okay, buckle down and really get serious about listing regularly and consistently. She does a minimum of 12 a day. That's her, that seems to be her sweet spot, she said. And she put in the chat, she's cleaning right now, 12 going up later. I have about 20 going up later. Uh, I have not listed yet today. We've been at the bins early today. And then we did our haul video that we'll be releasing tomorrow. And then we came to do this. And so it's two o'clock here and I have done nothing else but those things. But it was a fantastic bins day. It was a good bins day. Like seriously, like yeah. I wouldn't say like either one of us found anything that's like hundreds of dollars necessarily. No. Uh, but it was like, I mean, I got 33 pounds. You got like probably your usual around 30 pounds or so. Around 50 pounds. Oh, actually. 50 pounds, sorry. Yeah. Um, it was a really good day. And speaking of the bins, we, we, we say this in the, the haul video, which will be going up tomorrow but I'll say it at the beginning of the show here so as many people hear it as possible. We are finally gonna do our all day bins challenge this Wednesday. So for any of you guys, I see Sandy um, Pratt is in the chat, which Sandy, I didn't see you at the casino. I know Vicky ran into you, I missed you, I'm sorry about that. But for those of you who are here local in the Vegas area, if you want to come hang out with us, uh, Jody is gonna be coming and doing the bins challenge with us. We're gonna get there at eight in the morning at the Las Vegas bins and stay until four in the afternoon. I am committed, dang nabbit. I will be there for the entire time. Look at my face. This may or may not happen with me. I will probably give up the ghost by noon and be like, see ya, I'm outy guys yeah. and go home. Cause I'm sorry, like the bin, it's just hot. And yeah. standing on my feet shopping for eight plus hours a day, I've gotta be honest, as much as I love shopping and sourcing, my back is killing me by two or three hours in. It just is what it is. It's a challenge for a reason. So this is where I, we talked about goals versus challenges. And to me, I like these kinds of things where it's like, okay, let's do this thing. It's going to be kind of difficult, but let's power through it. And so I'm definitely going to be there for the full eight hours. If you are a local or you want to you know, come to Vegas, uh, feel free to join us either for the entire day or if you just want to show up for an hour or two in the middle of it. Um, especially for those of you who only come for part of it, uh, we can definitely get a little video footage of the stuff that you get once you get out to the parking lot. Mm -hmm. um, we just want to see what happens, like a full day of just going through those bins. I mean, hey. Oh, speaking of hey, 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 we've got uh, Farm Girl Scavenger, our friend Noelle, hey, Noelle in the chat as up? well. Good to see you. I see Vanessa Porter in the chat. Lots of our friends in the chat here, so thanks for popping in and watching us. Um, yeah, we've been so Alexa says it sounds terrible. No, oh, she does. She's not a big fan of the bins. And to be fair, because she's so niched in selling shoes, I did pick up a bunch of shoes today. You might want to watch my video later, uh, our video on on Monday. I think we're putting it up, um, Alexis. But for the most part, um, our bins. Are, and I think it's similar to, in several places. There are um, there's a network of like four to six people that source specifically shoes. And the second the shoe bins come out, they just pile hundreds of pairs, like every pair, in their bins and then go back and sort them after yeah. the fact. So you really don't get much of a chance until they throw back stuff. 
However, I do pretty well because I'm not going for the stuff they go for. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Rebecca had said the bins scared me. Um, you know what? I, I think that the bins can be very intimidating at first. Um, I think, you know, especially if you're in a new location, because every bins has its own kind of society and rules and like kind of vibe to mm -hmm. it. Um, so I think it's definitely, it definitely can be intimidating, but if you can get past the, you know, some people just think it's gross. Um, but if you're past that and you just go a couple of times, I feel like you get more comfortable. It's just like any new environment. Yeah. I um, mean, and I used to go by myself for, for the past several years. I would go by myself very frequently or go with my friend Corey here, uh, in town. And, you know, Katie just started joining me, what, like maybe two months ago or so. And, um, not that she didn't shop the bins before, but That's not here started. in Vegas. Yeah, not here in Vegas. So, I mean, I pretty much, I, I'm pretty comfortable at the bins by myself. I don't really talk to a lot of people, although I have, I will say I've been friendlier lately than I usually am. Uh, there are a few people that I'm friendly it's with. It's good to there. be friendly with people, even if you're not best buds with them. Because yeah. you never know when yeah. they're going to find something and Whatever. hand it to you. Whatever. But. Yeah, anyway. I mean, I think at least 50% of the people that go to our bins are jerks, yeah. so I don't even really pay attention to them. Well, when I started reselling, the bins were like my main source. And then as I got better and better and was doing better financially, then I started paying up for stuff and paying other sellers for their cool stuff. But now with things, how they've changed, I got to go back to the bins and I've fallen back in love. And it's mm -hmm. really cool to wait till you guys see some of the stuff that I sold today or this last week at the bins. I'm super excited about it. Um, but I love hearing all you guys talking about, uh, yeah, see, Liz you know. says, then you get it, run the risk of getting an unwanted shopping buddy. Exactly. Liz, Liz speaks my language, but she knows you can me. be friendly <laughs> without being best friends, but cause you never know when there's going to be something that they might throw your way or whatever. It's true. I mean, I'm not a jerk. I'm just saying I keep my head down and I don't really talk to people. Um, but I do talk to our friends, obviously when we run into our friends there or, you know, Katie and I, and there's a couple, a handful of people that we talk to all the time. Obviously we talk to Jesse for yesterday's fits every time we see him there and my friend Danielle was there today um, and we run into her yeah. quite frequently and you know that kind of thing obviously there's plenty out there for everybody I just oh yeah for sure and I, yeah. I'm getting more in with the the bins bros the t-shirt bros um, talking to them a little bit more getting a little bit more like respect and stuff which which is helpful there was one young guy who was like you're supposed to stand behind the red line which everybody's getting better at and this kid younger kid like kind of I think he he went and stood right in front of me and then he turned around and realized like I had been standing there and he like moved aside and like was very respectful and I'm like okay I appreciate usually it. Usually that doesn't happen they come and stand right in front of me every time which to They're be fair I it. don't care because I'm yeah. not rushing to go and throw everything in the air and yeah. get the t-shirts like these guys do. Yeah for I still sure. got a few and I, I always have, do. I have a lot of competition when it comes to the kind of stuff that I'm looking for so I, I gotta be getting in there getting um throwing some elbows but i wanted to show now we we always we now do our haul videos as a separate thing but i did want to show you guys one thing because for those of you who've been watching our haul videos there was one i think last week where i had something tied up in a plastic bag super tight because it was a t-shirt that was so gross and so disgusting it was supposed to be a white t-shirt it wasn't even yellow it was brown it was so gross and it smelled I would not have picked that up. so bad it smelled like cigarettes and it was just disgusting <laughs> And so I threw it in with all of it. So when I do my whites, I'll wash them first. Then I do a bleach soak. Then I wash them again. So I threw it in with my whites, uh, just regular detergent. But then I also added vinegar into the, the um, softener little depart, um, compartment on the sure. washer. And, um, and then, so it, then it got bleached. And let me tell you, it's like so much better. At least it's clean now. So, so I don't you can smell hide. it. Do you smell, does it smell like cigarettes to you? No, it smells like clean laundry. Yep. I think we're back. Okay. Okay. So weird. Don't anyway, bring that up. I don't think that's what made it don't happen. Don't do it again. I don't think that's what made it happen. Uh, we're just having some issues here and it's, it's lame. Uh, but I see it's frozen there, but it should be happening. Anyway, um, it still has a little yellowing around the collar, but I've already gotten some, some offers on it. I should be able to sell it for like at least, at least $40. Um, see, it's I, kind this, of... this is delayed, so it's fine. Okay. It's going to. It's going to have to, it's going to, yeah, my stink shirt froze the camera. Seriously. We should be back now. Um, anyway, I've gotten some offers. I, I don't know. I feel like I rescued this cool 80s vintage Chili's shirt 
and uh, now it doesn't have to be thrown out, and somebody can actually enjoy it. So nice, nice. I did see um, Cheryl in the chat as well, and then I, I'm trying to think who else. Is, I, I missed some of the names, so I apologize if I didn't say hi. I did say I, we try to say hi to people if we haven't seen you in a while. Um, but yeah. Thanks for popping in. Uh, yeah, we've got a whole bunch of good stuff. I mean, is it? Everything's good. Everything's good. We're, now? we're okay. all good. We're all good. Um, okay, so you know, as we said, we're I think we're on our third or fourth show now that we've changed things up. We, we try to keep this show to an hour. It stills in three parts, but the third part is different than it used to be. First part, as usually, we look at our real numbers for the last week, our gross sales across all of our platforms, which now I've got 11 billion platforms. Um, and uh, we look at like our, you know, the costs, like, you know, shipping, fees, and then of course, cost of goods, which is the most important. Um, and then we, in the middle section, we look at our sales highlights for the last week. We, I think we both have some really good sales for this last week. Um, some good, uh, it, it's always kind of Mikey. a bummer when you just have like a million forty dollar sales, uh, but we both have some really good ones. And then the last part of the show, we no longer do the haul during um, this show. Those are all pre-recorded videos throughout the week. The last part, we talk about our goals that we set last week. If we accomplished what we wanted to accomplish, if we didn't, uh, we give you guys time to berate us in the chat. And then we talk about, you know, how it's affected our sales and we make our goals, set our goals for the next week. And uh, of course, we encourage you guys when we get to that portion to participate in the chat and tell us how mm -hmm. you did the last week and what you are going to try to accomplish in the next week. Kind of a chance for you to be accountable. Yeah, for sure. So, hey, Mikey, nice to see you in the chat. It's been a minute. Um, we need to get together. We have we miss you, you in, in court. We need to get together. I was trying to a couple weeks ago. We should try this week. We, we got Don too. We need dinner. And I see Don in the chat. Yes. Hello. Hello, everybody. So hi, everyone. Um, okay. So I guess we can talk about our numbers for the week. Let's um, do it. I have to say. Like overall, I titled this show, Has It Been Worth It? Because we have really been sticking to, it's been relentless. Mm -hmm. Has it been worth it, in your opinion, what we've been doing to try and get our sales up. So, I mean, we can talk about it when we talk about the numbers a little bit, but I will say, so I've been consistently listing a minimum of 20 a day every day. I have not missed a single day of listing. There's been a couple of days where I think I may have only gotten 10 up, but I don't think that that has really affected me a whole heck of a lot. I have not been cross posting at all this entire month because my VA that does my cross posting is our friend, my friend Robin, our friend Robin. She's not in the chat. She's been really hurt. She pinched a nerve. And she can't, um, you know, she can't sit at the computer like and type right now. She has a slip disc, pinch nerve, something, something Ouch. very painful. I'm hoping that we'll get back to cross posting soon. I'm just waiting until she feels better and is able to do it. Uh, so really, my only listings have been going on eBay, and uh, so I have not had any cross posting. However, I do have my bot for Macari and Poshmark that does the delist and relist, which I think <clears throat> at least shows some activity there. So. Yeah. But do you think it's it's helped your eBay? I mean, we'll get to um, the numbers, but do you think... So I think, you know, we're starting to come out of the summer slump uh, in general. I think people are going to start to be buying for back to school, depending on what part of the country you're in. Some kids are back to school in the next week or two. Um, I know East Coast doesn't go back until after, the after um, you know, Labor Day. But here, uh, we start early because we end early because it's so hot here. So yeah. I think they go back to school in the next 10 to... 14 days. Oh, I can't wait here. for all those kids to not be at the bins anymore. I know, right? So, I mean, I've been, I have definitely seen an improvement this week only. Yeah. So is that something to hang my hat on yet? I don't know. I mean, I think so. I think you can still at least be cautiously optimistic about it. And I do think that it makes a big difference that your stuff has not been getting cross posted because you usually sell a lot of stuff like on, you know, Etsy and, mm -hmm. and all those other platforms. So it's, I think it's definitely um, holding you back a little bit, but overall I, my opinion, for me, I feel like it has, it has had a positive effect. I've been selling a lot of stuff very quickly that I've been picking up at the bins. Um, so I'm feeling good. Hopefully it continues. We're going to keep pushing forward. We do have some stuff coming up in the next couple of weeks that's going to be taking our time away. Yeah. So that's going to be hard. So we got to figure out how to like keep the, the momentum going. Well, because I have someone working for me doing my listing on the... Um on the the clothing which I, I've always had for the past you know several years now but uh, I've definitely stepped it up with the amount of listings I'm getting done every week mm -hmm. uh, because of that so what I'm gonna be doing and I don't know about everyone else but what I'm gonna be doing in that time frame is banking some of those listings so that I can get up early in the morning like Ryan and Allie are coming to visit us they're gonna be here for eight days 
at the end of August. And I'm sorry, we're going to be doing stuff every day. Yeah. So my goal is to get up in the morning and do our shipping and then quickly list 10 items from my draft bank so that I do not miss anything any day. So I'll at least get 10, 10 a day. Yeah. Um, I'm going to try to at least like, at least do some, because I have some stuff that's a little over to a year old now. So maybe doing like 10 a day of ending um, and, and doing sell similar and hopefully maybe listing a couple of new items every day because that doesn't take me very long. But yeah, so anyway, let's get to the numbers. I just feel, I feel like op uh, cautiously optimistic that they're on an upward trajectory. We've been so work we truly have been working, been working our hard. Off. I mean, this has been, I have not, I said this a couple of times, that I have not worked my business this hard since probably 2008, which was also the last time when online selling took a shit. Yeah. Like it just... Yeah. You know, because the economy went crazy 2008 and 2009. And that was when I first decided to dive in full time because I was a mortgage broker. And uh, for those of you that may remember, the mortgage banking crisis happened in 2008, 2009. And that, that bubble burst. And I lost the job, my very good six-figure job that I'd been doing for a very long time. Um, so I dove full time into eBay right around that time. Uh, so I have not worked this hard since then. Yeah. But you got you got to do what you got to do, guys. And so, I did slow down a little bit this week because I was feeling a little bit burned out. So I, I took took some time. Yeah, we got to do some fun stuff um, and chill out too. So this is uh, this last week ending yesterday. Um, it, my eBay has definitely stepped up a little bit. It, I have not been able to hit a thousand dollars in a week on eBay in quite a while. It's been a real struggle. So I had twenty three eBay orders, uh, nine Etsy orders, nothing on Poshmark. Um, uh, two between Grailed and, and Macari and Depop. One of those is Grailed, one is Depop. So Poshmark and Depop are kind of, you know, I still need to add more listings and stuff, so they're pretty slow at the moment. But 34 outgoing orders. You can see my eBay up a lot from last week's numbers, um, $1,421.72. So I'm very happy about that to finally see uh, some regular sales happening on eBay. I did have a very strong start to the week, which it's always a bummer because we get paid out weekly. We can have each do the weekly payouts on eBay. Um, so I was really excited because right at the very beginning of the week is when I had my best sales on eBay. So I was like, oh, I'm going to do so great this week. Uh, and then it's kind of petered out the last few days, which is a bummer. Same. I will say this weekend has been dead. I think I might have a zero sales day today on eBay so far. I have three, three Friday, items Saturday, to ship. Same. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, three things to ship. For eBay, yeah. For eBay. My other platforms are doing great, so yeah. it's weird. Uh, Etsy, uh, definitely, like, I'm, I think I'm, like, a good double of what I was last week, so $721.41. Um, and then just $96 between that one grailed sale and Depop sale. So my total gross sales, over 2000 which finally, thank God, it's been a while, I would love to be able to hit three, but $2,240.12. You see my shipping, one nineteen fifty four. You see the breakdown of all the fees. And then my cost of goods, $200. Um, I will say, it's funny, because now that I'm selling so much stuff from the bins, uh, when I do sell something that I bought a while back that I definitely had to pay more into, I'm like, ugh. Why did I pay so much for that when I got all this stuff for a dollar? Jeez. See? And how long have I been saying that to you? Yeah. Because I'm so cheap with the way I source. I and know. you'd always be like, wow, I got this great thing. It looks great in my well, store. And blah, 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 blah. hey, when my sales were a-hopping, I could afford to like be paying up for stuff. But now it's nope. like you got to make changes. I never paid up for stuff. I'm cheap I know, as hell. I know, but I wanted to have lots of higher, you know, higher valued stuff. But... I'm finding them, luckily, at least for now, we've got a really good source, consistent source of the bins, and I am able to find some higher end stuff. So $200 cost of goods, my net total sales, $1,675.65. My gross average sale price, pretty good. My That's goal a used great to be- ASP. Yeah, my goal used to be 70 and above, and I've had to like kind of adjust my goal because of all of the bin stuff I'm doing. Um, and so my goal has been like above 50. So 65.89 is a really good average sale price right now. Um, and net average sale price, forty nine twenty eight. So I'm really happy with where it's going. It'll be interesting to see what happens next week with my numbers. Does it mm -hmm. go right back to where it used to be? Can I continue to have like some good sales? We'll see. Stay tuned. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, okay, whoops. Uh, next up for you. I have finally had a good week. Alla frickin' Luya. This is a week that is close to what my normal numbers used to be like. Mm -hmm. So I had 36 eBay orders, 12 on Etsy. Etsy was strong this week. Poshmark is slow. I've been slow on Posh the last two weeks, although I had been very strong for several months prior to that. Uh, seven on Macari. 
And then I had two private orders, and I'll talk about that briefly. Um, I am in several different vintage seller groups, buy and sell groups, and you are able to buy and sell with approval for free in these particular groups. So a lot of people post things, they post ISO, which is in search of a certain aesthetic or a certain look, and then everybody that sells puts their pictures and measurements up and their prices up for certain items. Now, for the most part, it, it just takes a couple of minutes to do if you're in these groups, um, but I have not had any success on selling anything so far, so I don't specifically put up sale posts, but I will respond to somebody's ISO. And this week, I actually had two purchases that came from those groups, which means the only fees I paid were the PayPal fees for goods and services, because mm. you are required to use goods and services to protect yourself and the buyer. Uh, so anyway, I had 62 outgoing orders, which is a good amount for me. I also did over 2,000 on eBay, which was great. 741 on Etsy, which I think is almost exactly what you did. It's real close. Uh, 741 on Etsy, 228 on Poshmark, 246 on Macari, 140 between those two sales on um, that were private. So my total gross for the week was 3433. Nice. If I could do three to four thousand every week on um, on combined that's my goal that's been my goal for a quite a while and i was consistently doing that for several years so 196 in shipping and then you see the breakdown of all the other fees my cost of goods is always relatively low at 211 dollars i screwed up because i added your that your private orders on the thing it put i didn't realize it pushed this out but here's your gross average sale my price gross price. average sale price is just over 55 dollars, so 55 37 which is good i like to be between 50 and 60. and your net was like and my net 42. was 40 like 42 or 43 dollars and it's um so for me this is a good week if i can net 2500 dollars a week and this is a net of 2600 if i can net 2500 a week that's what's going in my bank account that makes me very happy yeah. Um, 2500 a week puts me kind of where I want to be. So you know? like I say, like, let's see where it goes this next week. We're going to keep, keep our heads down, keep pushing it up, pushing mm -hmm. on, um, keep making this happen and see what happens with our numbers for the next week. Because... Yeah. So this is the first time I can say, I feel like I've had a good week in several months, mm -hmm. in several months. So, um, I see Diane in the chat. Hello, I know. My friend. Uh, hi Diane. What's happening? Um, so yeah, I guess we'll talk about our solds now. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to talk just... about our highlights of our solds. Sometimes it's something that we're going to talk about that it was a bad buy, or sometimes it'll be something we're just talking about to educate why we purchased it. Uh, and it's not always going to be like an out-of-this-world sales number. Right. So um, we talk about why we pick things up and what they sold for and what we paid for them originally. So that's yeah. what we're going to do. All right, let's go ahead and start with yours. So if you go back to the top picture of that, so I just, I did talk about this. I did post about this. So you'll see a couple of overlaps for people that do follow me on Instagram. Uh, and I apologize for that, but it's a very different audience for the most part. So some of it does overlap. But um, this was actually something I'd picked up at the bins. It was fairly lightweight. I paid a little over $5 for it based on the weight. I picked it up because I love rescuing vintage quilts. However, this had so much damage to it that I was actually gonna throw it away. And when I showed it to uh, my friend, our friend Teresa, in our chat, because it was red, and I think she would have loved it if it, and she's a quilter, and her mom was a quilter, so if it were in good condition, I actually may have sent it to her if she had liked it. It was not in good condition, as you can see. But she's like, no, 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 list it anyway, list it as a cutter. So that's what I did. And in fact, it sold like within an hour. That's crazy. It sold within an hour. So I paid $5. It sold for $55 plus the shipping. So I was going to throw it away. Uh, so I make, you know, I made about a $40 profit or so on something that I didn't, I was going to throw away. So that's very, just a, a little tip to pick up. Very nice. Very nice. All right. Uh, oh. I didn't adjust these. My first one, um, I'm doing really well with like kind of these camp shirts. Uh, this is a cool George Roth of Germany shirt. Um, it's kind of geometric. I put geometric rockabilly, kind of some different keywords in there. Um, and, uh, you know, you can see I have a price for $70. I think you showed me that and I said I wasn't, I wouldn't have picked it up. All right. So there you it, go. It sold, it like sold, I think I had it listed for maybe a week. Um, and you know, when I do our, when we do our haul videos, I'll say like, oh, I'm going to price this for X amount and then I'll try to get at least X amount. So $69.99, but pretty much pretty quickly when people start following, um, start watching my items, I'll send out my lowest offer. I'm like 50 bucks 
and somebody bit and I got $50 for it. So it sold within like a week or so of me listing it. Um, and it cost you like a dollar. Maybe it, not even so, yeah, because it wasn't even a, yeah. Because it's a even. lightweight. Yep, absolutely. So yeah, these, I just really thought it was a really cool. Um, it's a cool print. Print. Yeah, and George Roth does sell well depending on uh, what the item is. So I think you did show this to me, but I didn't see the brand. Had I seen the brand, I probably would have said I would have gotten it. But in general, um, because they're so plentiful, I don't always pick those up. Oh, so, yeah. real quick. I, I Hold on a second. Hold on. We're jumping out of this for a second. So okay. So we're going to share what happened with Shelly. So yesterday, it was yesterday, right? Mm -hmm. Yesterday, Shelly, um, so Shelly's our friend. She she's, works for eBay, but her true passion is being a reseller. She's one of us, guys. One of us. One of us. Mm -hmm. Uh, and she wants to retire someday and just do reselling. Um, and so yesterday she was at Goodwill. She walked in there and right when she walked in, they were putting out stuff and they were just it was Friday. She's oh, sorry. Friday. 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 So she walked in. Yeah, that's right. Cause I was wondering, I was like, why isn't Shelly working? But apparently she was out shopping. Um, and they had just literally just put out, uh, a set of cut co dives in the block. Like those ones that are like, it was the coming out white. on the cart. Yeah, it's yeah. coming out of the cart. The Mother of Pearl handle, Cutco, knife set, in the block. Not com completely complete. Missing one knife. Yeah, and so there's like 30 knives in it, and they had it priced at $21.99. And it's Goodwill, so no sales tax, even though she's in California. So $21.99. What's she saying? <laughs> oh, don't Shh, out don't me. Don't out me. Because <laughs> she um, was shopping on Friday. Anyway, $21.99. She was doing some research. I think she knew, like, oh, it, it's got to, you know, she was freaking out because she knew it was worth good money. Oh, yeah. That's, I've never found Cutco in the wild. And I think she, like, very briefly saw, like, a listing that was, like, $600. And so even that she was, like, excited about. But then she did some more research. She listed them. They already sold this morning, you guys, for $1,900. And honestly, had she held out, she probably could have gotten closer to $2,500 to $3,000. But to be fair... I would have taken the $1,900 offer as well. Absolutely would have taken $1,900 on a $22 item within 24 hours of listing. Never in my life have I found Cutco. Not even one like yeah. item. Never mind a $1, whole $1,900 in like... I Less mean, than 24 hours. She said this is her biggest sale she's ever had. And she's had some really big ones because Shelly has a great eye. And she shops estate sales and does a lot of vintage yeah. like hard goods and artwork and all kinds of stuff like that. She doesn't do a ton of clothing. But... That was a badass sale. Seriously. I'm, I'm super jelly, but also proud. Yeah. <laughs> she grabbed those knives and ran. She's awesome. like, I couldn't wait to get the F out of the store. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, she said I was going to be happy with 1500 but full sets were at like 1600 last year. That's so awesome. Mm -hmm. All right, back to our stuff. Uh, let's go to your next one. Here we go. What's up? So I picked this up at an estate sale when I was just in Arizona last month for the camp listing party thing. I was went to an estate sale on the Friday after the after the conference with our friend Wendy who lives in town. It was just Wendy and I and I paid $5 for this. This was new without tags, super clean inside and out. I listed it as new without tags. I did put it in there, new without tags and everything. I did use a stock photo for the first one. Um, I don't care. Don't at me. Uh, and it sold within a few days. I did take an offer for $75. Mm. $75 for a freaking backpack? Yeah. I was perfectly happy taking that. Oh, look back at your memories. Look back at my memories. I was at, <laughs> yes, one year ago yesterday, I was in, uh, I was at eBay headquarters yeah. with Shelly. Okay, uh, anything else on this one? No, I just thought it was pretty cool. I mean, it's a Carhartt. Anything Carhartt's a good idea. Uh, yeah, I mean, not everything price. Carhartt is worth picking up, let's be fair. Okay. However, the backpack and it was nicely you know it was because it was almost new i actually figured i was only gonna get like 30 bucks for it yeah. i didn't know it was worth this much mm -hmm. and it sold within a couple of days all right next up i have this uh bumka i don't know how to pronounce it bumka bibis 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 another Just... no name yeah Great so camp shirt. i i grabbed this because of the pattern it's really cool it's like cocktails it's a very cool pattern and garnishes 100 silk um and when i went and looked at you know it's definitely vintage 90s when i went and looked at comps nothing sold for more than like 30 bucks tops there aren't a ton of them out there it really the brand has is nothing 
Um, but it's 100% silk and it has a really cool pattern on it. And once again, I, I had this listed for maybe a couple of days. And I, when I look at comps, guys, I look at Terapeak as well. So I'm looking back two years. Um, and so this is pretty much going to be like the highest priced of this brand uh, it, within the, at least the last two years. I sold it for $50. It was another one I sent out an offer for 50 Sweet. And somebody accepted it. And bam, it was out on its way. Um, so yeah, with something like this, it's really more about the pattern than it is about the brand, um, because it's. I mm. just think it's super. I wonder cool. who's been saying that for years about oh, yeah, it just matters I never about knew. the style I never and knew. the pattern and. Well, the I mean, brand I know that's definitely that's definitely true when it comes mm. to t-shirts. Nobody cares. I mean, I'm sorry I did spend the last five years telling you you were wrong. <laughs> Not really, <laughs> but yes, thank you. you. Jerk. <laughs> All right, what's up? All right, so this is one where I thought you told me I was wrong on this one, and I I learned and I agreed. So we talked about this a few weeks ago. This Anchor Blue brand of jeans. I for some reason I was thinking they were a Kmart brand. Someone said they were a mall brand. I don't know. It wasn't anything I ever wore. But in the '90s, this is very comparable to what like these big, huge raver Jenko jeans go for. Jenko would still sell for more. However, right after us talking about this and Katie picking them up and selling each pair for $90 that she picked up, I found them like the following week. I picked up a pair myself. These sold within a couple of days also for $95. So Anchor Blue picked these up at the bins, paid about $4 because they are heavy. They do weigh over two pounds and they're a good size. Sold them for $95. Yeah. They were listed for like three days. These big jeans, I'll tell you right now, guys, I, I show a pair in my haul video that you'll see tomorrow. Uh, just go look at vintage South Pole jeans. Look at the solds. Look at the sell-through rate. You'll be amazed. I made Vicky gasp in the car because she was like, I've been passing these up for so long. For years, They're right? Because South They're Pole back. was sold at JCPenney. It probably still is. It was that shitty brand, kind of like Echo, uh, that everybody was buying and wearing in the you know, 90s and early 2000s but it wasn't ever a super i mean it was popular because it was mid-range pricing but it wasn't like a collectible style and it wasn't a good streetwear style so i've never picked up south pole south mm -hmm. pole's always been bleh. but yeah. apparently they're back guys. south pole is also back so here's a heads up south pole wide leg jeans men's not the women's because the women's don't sell yeah. as well Wide leg men's jeans from South Pole from the 90s Y2K. Pick those shit up too. Seriously, go, just go look at eBay and look at the solds and look at the numbers. It's like a 300% sell through. It's, just put vintage South Pole yeah. jeans. And especially if you find the ones that have like the embroidery and embellishments on them. Um, it's just nuts. Okay, so next up for me, I think I, uh, so I just, I just literally just listed this a couple of days ago. Um, I had grabbed this. I had looked it up because I was kind of like, eh, should I even pick this up? And I saw, oh, it does, does actually have some good numbers. Um, now, this particular one that I had is not like one of the ones I should sell for a ton. I noticed with this 26 red, um, there are a lot of them that have like bands on them or different things on them uh, that make them worth more. Um, plus, this one had a stain on it and I washed it. I spot treated it. I bleached it. I, not, I was able to make it fade a little bit, but you can see it's still right there on the front of it. Um, and I still sold the shirt for $50. I sent out an offer for $50 and sold it. See, I wouldn't pick that one up either. Yeah, I wasn't Weird. going to. And then I was like, this kind of looks like it could be a streetwear brand. And I noticed like the tag uh, said made in the USA, which I don't know why I didn't take a picture of the back of the tag, but it is made in the USA. Um, so that's why Muy I grande. It up. Yeah. So there um, you go. 50 bucks, guys. Interesting. So Vanessa asked, uh, what about fat? Like, so you mean like uh, fat know. farm or uh, baby fat? I don't know. I don't know. I, can, I, I haven't started to look yeah. those up yet. I know the apple bottom jeans are back, and I know that those are quite popular if you find them. Apple bottom jeans. I posted a, I bought and listed a fat farm t shirt like with like a, a month or so ago. It has not sold. I haven't gotten any offers, so I couldn't say about that. But I will say we were at the bins earlier this last week and there were two young kids in there that were, I mean, when I say young kids, I mean, they're probably like 15 or so. Um, and they were, it was so funny to see how they were dressed because they had like the full on oh, God. giant pants. Uh, the Ed Hardy Ed pants. Ed Hardy shirts. Ed Hardy pants. They all had stuff hanging off their pants. One guy had a freaking raccoon like tail that was like 
over a foot long hanging out of the back of his pants. Yep. It was like, I felt like I was being transformed back into like back in high the school. late 90s, early 2000s. Back in high school or like my early, uh, yeah, my, being in my mm. early 20s at, yeah, going it's to like, the clubs. Yeah, full on, like just ridiculous. Uh, it's crazy. So it's all back, guys. It's all back. The movie can't hardly wait. Uh, Sean Green, his or Seth Green, sorry, his outfit and that. Yeah, that's where we're heading right now. All right, next up for you. Uh, I did show this on my Instagram. This was one that I did show in the hall a couple of weeks ago as well. I picked this up at the bins. This is a vintage paint by numbers. It's mid century, probably fifties, late fifties or so. Uh, I paid maybe five dollars because it's fairly light. It sold overnight for my full price, $129.95 plus shipping. Now, I did want to show, I do believe that this frame had something to do with it as well. It is a beveled oak frame, but it, the frame is much older than the, um, than the print, I do believe. I do believe this frame could be an antique frame, and that may have had something to do with it. I don't know the buyer. I didn't ask. It doesn't really matter. But it has the wooden nails, <clears throat> and if you could look at the back of it, somebody framed this professionally. <clears throat> so I think they had the frame and then put this in it. I don't know. It was just a really well done um, paint by number and it had a really fun, you know, vintage kind of like jungle tiki. But I saw our friend Maggie commented on your post and said that she totally would have bought it. Yeah. And, yeah. And she's yeah. not a seller, by the way. She's, no, like, and she's she actually also, a lo our lawyer. And I don't think it was necessarily <clears throat> because of the frame. I think it would, for her it really was about the artwork. And yeah. I mean, how it looks the frame, of course, but... Um, yeah, so I paid, you know, like I said, I paid maybe $5 for it, flipped it overnight for 130 plus shipping. Uh, buyers already received it. I haven't gotten feedback yet, but whatever. Um, Very good. Yeah, I was pretty happy with it. I mean, I, I expected it was going to sell in the $75 range. And I, again, I priced it high, expecting to send offers or have sales, have wiggle room and all that stuff. There wasn't even an offer sent to me, and it just, it sold right away. How much did it cost to ship? I know you use UPS. Uh, it remember? cost just about $15 to ship, actually, because it was only going to, um, it either went to California or Oregon. Nice. Very nice. So for us, we're in Las Vegas, for those of you that don't know, so the shipping was not super high. Um, it did go, uh, yeah, UPS ground because it was an oversized box, but I was pretty happy with that return, and it wasn't a print that I could find anywhere so it may there are certain ones that sell for a lot of money mm -hmm. was I doing a two-hour research in depth for it absolutely not I just looked very briefly to see if I could find this print or anything looked similar uh, and I didn't find any listed or sold so that may have been part of it so this very well could have been a $300 paint by number and I just don't know because I didn't dive deep enough yeah however I'm very happy with the return yeah, for sure all right next up for me this is another one that sold within less than a day of me listing it. Um, and this seriously is just a, like, a, a worker's jacket. This is, like, you know, when you see these Tri-Mountain or, like, Port Authority, some of these brands, they're the brands that, like, when companies want to get jackets for their, their employees, they're, they're the brands that they're usually made on. Um, and so this was for, uh, this is Alaska's number one soft drink, but it's really cool because it's like all embroidered on the back and it says like Pepsi down the sleeve and then the front of it, it's Pepsi Bottling Group, I think is what PBG is. Oh, sure. Yeah, Pepsi Bottle, it's right there in the title. Uh, but you can see it's got a little bit of staining right there on where it says Pepsi Bottling Group. I did try to wash it. I scrubbed really hard on, on those threads and washed it. It's still a little bit stained You probably there. could have used a little bleach pen right on it, but I would have been afraid and that it would have bled. I wouldn't screw it up. Yeah. Um, but I listed it, and it sold. I think somebody sent me an offer for $70 like the day after I, I listed it. And let me tell you, when you're only spending like 2 $3 on something, 70 bucks, I'm like sold. Yep. Done. Can't take the money fast. Bye. Yet. See you later. Uh, th and this was a jacket I saw somebody else had thrown back, and I sold it right away, seventy bucks. So definitely a really doesn't really, good really matter how many people you have at the bins, you can still do well if you know what you're looking for. Yep, absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, Tri Mountain in and of itself, Cheryl has that's no just like value. authority. It's just a blank that a it, lot of companies use to sell things. It's like having a Hanes T-shirt. It really doesn't matter. It's just it's usually used for like an employee um, stuff. So it really has to do with what's on it. All right, what you got here? So this I picked up the bins. Uh, Corey might recognize these. I, I believe she was with me. I've had these probably about a year. I actually picked up two of them. These are vintage uh, Native American bears that have been sewn and decorated. They're from the uh, 90s. If you go to the last tag, it was priced $450. It's actually from the 80s, sorry. These are um, 
you know, artist designed. Now, be very, very careful when you are listing anything and putting the term Native American in the title, you have to have the ability to attribute it to a certain tribe. It has to be documented in some way. And this was, this says who it was that uh, that created it, that it's a Sioux Indian contemporary, um, May, and it has all the information right there on the tag. So I did get two of these at the bins. They're very heavy jointed mohair, um, you know, articulated mohair bears. They feel very much like a stife bear. They're not stife, but they feel like it. Very well made bears. And then everything on top of it is even is beautiful. So I did sell this. I did take an offer for two hundred and fifty dollars. I had them listed quite a while. There's not very much um, of them listed, if any. So it was definitely gonna have to find the right buyer. My buyer was thrilled. Um, they paid $250, I, plus shipping. Um, and it was just a beautiful, beautiful doll. I mean, animal, you know, whatever, bear doll. Um, I'm so glad that I was able to save this from the landfill because the amount of work and, and history and the type of thing that this is, I really hate that this kind of stuff could have gotten thrown yeah, away. Absolutely. I really hate it. Absolutely. Uh, so Shelly says, I need to put my big girl pants on and brave the bins. Shelly, next time you come to Vegas, we are going to the bins. I we we've brought her twice. Huh? We've brought her with us twice. Okay, well, we're going again. All right. She can do it with us. Come on. Um, seriously, because we'll just, we, oh, we can't. Yeah. Corey has one of them too, actually. So Corey yeah. got one of them, one of those bears that same day. Um, yeah, so I have one left. It's not quite as intricate as this one. So we'll see. I was pretty happy. Uh, selling that one even though it took a while didn't matter I, I was able to get a good price for it yeah all right my last ebay thing to share is this uh this t-shirt so i had got if you guys remember i had gotten i had bought like a whole bunch of grateful dead t-shirts from someone um and my cost ended up being about 30 dollars per shirt he brought them from a fellow seller a yes of ours. i did and my cost was about $30 per shirt. I have sold uh, multiple shirts. I've way more than made my money back. I still have a few of the Grateful Dead t-shirts. And I had two of these shirts that were not, they weren't Grateful Dead shirts. And they, it was really interesting to try to like research them and figure out like what keywords to use. Um, but I had this one, which is a, it was, the tag was large, but I, I listed it as a medium because of the measurements. I had another one that was an extra large that sold on Etsy for like $180. Um, this one I sent an offer for 75 and finally sold it. I mean, I've had these now for well over a year. Um, I was happy, you know, at this point, yes, I paid 30 for it, but I've already gone way beyond into the profit zone for that, uh, that bulk buy. So any money I make on any of the, the ones that are left over, I'm happy with. And, uh, but what a cool shirt, right? It's a really cool shirt. Don't, I love it. Don't change it over yet. So I want to answer Jane's, uh, question here. She said, I've never been to the bins. Uh, don't understand how these higher priced items are ending up in the bins instead of the stores. So here's the thing, here in Las Vegas, and it's not everywhere, it depends on your location. There are bins locations that are just the cast offs from the store that have the tags that have been through every rotation, have been through every sale, and they're probably 60 days on the floor or longer before they get tossed. Those are not necessarily as good as far as bins locations. That That's where you're gonna get the picked over crap and occasionally you'll find a gem that got passed through, maybe they priced it too high, and even on the sale day, nobody wanted to pay that, so you'll pay the couple of bucks for it. Here in Las Vegas, we're very fortunate that our bins are also direct donation. That means that the items come in and they get put out without being sorted, many times in garbage bags still, from donations, and the people have ripped open, and we rip open the bags. So that's where we are getting the gems for the most part. I very rarely find anything that has a tag on it that has already been on the Goodwill floor that I'm willing to buy from the bins, very rarely, maybe a handful of times. Almost everything that Katie and I both get is stuff that was direct donated and has not yep. been picked through. Yes, they have sorters in the back that try to pick off the cherry pick the good stuff that they're gonna throw but, into the auction online, yeah. but I think they look mostly for electronics and very high visibility known brands that are easy, but even that they don't go through all of But them. you look at all the stuff that Vicki and I get at the bins and think about how much of it gets gets overlooked by other resellers who are doing this to make a living. Um, the idea that there's somebody in the back who's making a minimum wage, who's skilled enough to be able to pull out all the good stuff, it's just, it's Right, never, the reality is it's, it's never that's not happen. a case. Because if they were skilled enough to know what these things were worth, they would not be working at a Goodwill in the backyard, in the back door. And I'm not doing that to denigrate anybody's hard work. It's just if they're skilled enough to know this information and that they can pick something up and know that it's worth hundreds of dollars, don't you think they'd be doing it themselves? Yeah. Uh, so 
that's really the the bottom line. And then Sonny here just woke up again. I don't know what it is about <laughs> Sonny. Anyway, he was posting at 4 a.m. that he was wide awake with insomnia. So I'm assuming that he went back to bed at some point and he's just waking up now. So thanks for popping in and hanging out with us also. Yep. All right. Next up for you. Speaking of the bins. This was my good find that I grabbed at the bins. I had this listed for maybe a week or two. I did show this on our show. Um, the fact that this was actually at the bins in great condition and made it to the bins is shocking. Uh, now, so I paid about 6 or $7 based on the weight for this. As far, as easy as I could tell or as close as I could tell, there were none of these listed, by the way, in this pattern uh, in the blanket. As far as I can tell, they've been using that Beaver State tag for many decades now. As far as I can tell, this one was somewhere in the 90s. I wasn't able to find enough information. If this were a 50s, 60s, 70s Pendleton, I definitely would have held out for more money. But being that it was 90s and not super old, um, I got an offer for, I believe it was $275 on this, and I was very happy to take $275. It was listed for maybe a week or two, and again, I paid $7 for it. Normally, would I have held out for more money? Absolutely. Right now in this economy, I am not being precious about the pricing. I think $275 from $7 within two weeks was damn good. Yep. Um, and I wasn't going to hang on to this much longer. Well, and this was a blanket that actually had a Goodwill tag on it that said five ninety nine, and we could not figure out like why it wouldn't have been bought at the store. And then we looked at the date on the tag, and it was literally the day before. So some worker at that Goodwill must have been lazy and just thrown yep. it into the the, the bins. Um, with however they separate that stuff out. Because, yeah, that's that's just nuts. All right, anything else? No, I just think, I mean, always pick up Pendleton. That's it. I think you guys know that. Pick up Pendleton. Not women's Pendleton clothing. Leave that shit behind. It's worthless. Yeah. Men's Pendleton jackets, shirts, blankets, bags, pillows, if you find them. There's a handful of them. Always pick up Pendleton. Pendleton wool. Yeah. Not the Pendleton acrylic shit that you're finding at, that they're making and that they put at Costco that's not worth as much. Not worth picking up for resale. Great for yourself. Not mm -hmm. worth picking up for resale. Uh, and women's Pendleton. Crap. Don't pick it up. Yep. All right. Next up. Now, last week, I think I had my first uh, blanket sale. Um, this time, it's a towel. So I picked this up at the bins. It's It was pretty lightweight. Um, it, it was. It, I had to, uh, I did a little bit of sweater shaving on it. I washed it. I bleached it. And I think it turned out really nice. Um, in very nice condition. This Club Med towel. Maybe I spent a dollar fifty two dollars on it and I sold it on Etsy for forty four oh nine when I looked at like comps I couldn't find this exact one but whatever I looked at comps on like Terapeak and stuff um, it wasn't gonna be like a huge seller anyway but I was excited that I only had it listed for like a couple of weeks and it sold and it um, and it like it went to like some director's house in LA so I was like oh that's, that's pretty funny really, that's really so cool. uh, Noelle says women's vintage Pendleton wool sells eh some of it uh, I would pick up the plaid skirts, the vintage plaid wool skirts from Pendleton. That's it. Nothing else sells worthwhile. I mean, it might eventually sell for 15, 20, 25 bucks, but for me, that's not worth it. And it's very slow moving. I wouldn't pick up wool blazers. I wouldn't pick up, pick up wool suits. Um, they just don't sell well and they don't sell fast enough uh, that you're going to sit on them for too, far too long. The plaid skirts, sure. If you find a plaid skirt by Pendleton, I would pick that up. The wool skirts, the pleated skirts. I always pick those up. I pick them up regardless of who makes them, quite honestly, because they always sell well. They're kind yeah. of a classic. Uh, who did it? Says the challenge is going to be exhausting doing the regular stay there all day. Um, there, so I think a lot of them leave mid-afternoon. Um, and then, uh, cause Brit, our friend Brit, he goes there almost every day, but he likes to go for the very last rotation, um, because there's a lot less people there and he has a better chance of like getting his hands on some really good stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, which he's, you know, he's been yelling at us like an old man about getting on, on his turf and being there. Um, late. And, and mind you, Brit hated the bins until recently as well. So just like Katie, he started shopping at the bins and now he's yelling at us cause we're going to be there in the afternoon yeah. on one day. I was like, <laughs> I couldn't drag his ass to the bins before. He would come occasionally here or there, buy one thing and be like, this is crap, I'm out. Yeah. So <laughs> but you know what? It makes such a, it, seriously, it makes such a huge difference how frequently they're now uh, with new management and with people behaving better and stuff being regularly um, turned over. It makes all the difference. Mm -hmm. So 
listen, you have to check out the bins in your own area because it's possible that it's not going to be a good location. Yeah. And just like, I mean, I saw Tracy comment there. Tracy lives in Rhode Island. Uh, we've known each other since junior high. She uh, says that she doesn't know what these bins are that we speak of. They don't have them. The closest one to New England is somewhere in uh, New Hampshire. And they do not, I mean, Rhode Island doesn't even have Goodwills. I think there might maybe one Goodwill in Rhode Island now, but there wasn't any for the longest time. Yeah. Uh, so you're not... I mean, it's not that you're not, I mean, you are missing something, well, but you can't get to one either. So what's the, there is a bins on the East coast that, um, that Trish was going yes, to New what, Hampshire. Oh, New Hampshire. Okay. Sorry. All right. Next up for you. Uh, this is just a wool brand that I will pick up because it's very well made eighties, nineties Geiger made in Austria and Geiger Geiger. I don't know. I'm going to go with Geiger. It's Geiger. Uh, I picked this up because it's very, very well made, heavy made knit, usually sweaters. This is like a sweater jacket almost. Um, I didn't pay much for this. I, I've had it for a little bit, but I didn't pay much for it, maybe four or five bucks based on the weight. But they're nice to find them when they haven't been shrunken, when they don't have all the pills, and um, there's no you know moth holes from the wool. So it sold for the price you see there, $97 plus shipping to the Netherlands. It sold on Etsy. Nice. So I made another $10 or so on the on the shipping as well. I sold something to the Netherlands too this week. I think I sold two things to the Netherlands. It's, it's oh, weird. That's, that's my home country. That's where my family's from. Okay. Really? Um, yes. Amsterdam. How do I not even know this? Well, because well, you, you would know it if you listened to me when I talked. So. Oh, well, I've tuned you out years ago. <laughs> uh, my family's from Amsterdam. All right, um, next up for me, this is another bins purchase. Now, this is just to show you how- uh, Anything will sell. Anything will sell. Now, I saw this, I thought it was cool. I like the whole national semiconductor. I like stuff that's kind of like interesting technology-based and stuff. This did have some staining on it, um, but here's the thing, guys. I, let me tell you something. I put this whole thing in a bleach bath. I put the whole thing. You can see it faded the blue a little bit, um, but it didn't yeah, but do... it looks kind of cool. It didn't fade it badly. Yep, there's and no it uniformly it look, faded it. Yep, it doesn't look bleached. It doesn't look like it had harmed it in any way, and it got rid of any of the discoloration that was on there. So I sold it for sixty two ninety nine, and it was literally so listed crazy. for maybe a week, week and a half tops. And uh, yeah, I'm a Dutch Jew. Um, that's to Alexis. Uh, oh, so apparently Alexis, we're Alexis both Dutch is, Jews. Alexis is a Dutch Jew as well. Interesting. Yep. Uh, so sixty two ninety nine and it, what it cost me maybe three dollars two dollars so there you go guys Ooh. I did show this on uh, my uh, Instagram as well this one was kind of funny uh, because I had picked this up at the bins one day when Jody was there with me actually I think Jody and Corey were there I had two of the pieces in my cart and another woman had one of the pieces in her cart. And what I did was I asked her for the other one. I bought it from her. I paid 20 bucks. I gave her $20. I think I Venmoed her $20 for her piece. And then I kept the other pieces myself and I put them together. So totally, I probably paid $24 for them because it's lightweight. And then it sold for the price you see there, $112 plus shipping. This actually went to Australia. Wow. So I made probably another $10 on the shipping on this as well. And it sat for, I mean, I probably had them six months, but... Look at that pattern. Come on now. Look at that. It's ridiculous. How could I leave it behind? I don't know. You couldn't. It's very magical. I mean, Beverly Goldberg is like wearing this somewhere. <laughs> Pretty much. Okay, next up, I have this UCL Bruins t-shirt. I've had UCLA Bruins. I've had this for a little while. Um, it was very small. Um, I've probably sent out a bunch of offers on eBay for as low as like $50 to try and sell this. You can see it's got a little hole right there. It looks um, really thin from, and soft. Oh yeah, from 1986, just a really cool Rose Bowl t-shirt. But it sold on Etsy for $89.99. I probably paid like $10, $15 tops for this. Um, I love it. Uh, and I'm glad I actually sold it for the full price and on, on Etsy. Etsy really came through for me on a few. Same, good, I had a really good week on Etsy. Yeah, we, we almost sold exactly the same, but, um, yeah, so I was happy to sell that for that price. Okay, so this is one of my private sales that I did through a group. I did not sell it for the price you see there. I had it on sale for $62.36. I've talked about this before. I actually have two of these listed. Um, I, I used this stock photo because it shows that this was a shirt, the shirt, the Paradise Found vintage shirt with the rainbow tag that Magnum PI was mm -hmm. photographed in many, many times. It's a very popular shirt. Uh, in any case, I sold this for... $80 plus shipping. 
Yeah, eighty dollars plus shipping, and this is going international as well. You sold that in one of the groups, didn't you? And I sold it in one of the groups, so no fees, just the PayPal fees. So I sold it for more in a private sale. Mikey. It is absolutely a Mikey kind of <laughs> shirt. And if it was uh, an inexpensive one, I would have gifted it to you, Mikey. I love you, but and, not eighty dollars worth of handing it over. And don't Sorry. you still have another one of these? I do. It's too small though. It's a medium. No, but I mean, I, I'm just saying. Don't you have another one of these yes. to sell? Yes, I do. I still have one listed that's a medium. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So next up for me, I'm really excited about this one. Uh, this sold yesterday, I think. This Cornell Irish wool cardigan sweater. This is uh, just a super cool, really, really nice um, cardigan sweater. I bought this from the Grandpa sweater. You didn't even put Grandpa on the title. Well, I think it's it's probably in my um, Grandpa shawl collar. It's in my keywords, woman. Okay. With Etsy, it doesn't show that. That's just not in the title, but it's definitely in my keywords. Uh, this is one that I bought when we went to yesterday's fits a few months ago. Um, and it, I had bought a bunch of his eBay stuff. I paid $10 for this and sold it for one thirty-five. I actually showed it to him because he just recently in the last uh, month or so has started finally listing his stuff on eBay after I've har or Etsy. I mean, after I've harassed him multiple times. And so I said, Hey, look at this, uh, cardigan that I'm pretty sure I, you sold me. And he's like, yep, I sold you that. And I said, I sold it for one thirty-five, and he was a holy cow. So, ten bucks into one thirty-five. Pretty nice. Not too Pretty shabby. Nice. Not too shabby. All right. Well, here's your last one. Uh, and this is my last one. This was one that I picked up at the bins in Colorado, I believe, in uh, back in uh, January, my last trip. This was just a really odd piece. It wasn't super well made. It's like the the velvet. It was almost. It felt almost costumey, but it's not costumey. Mm -hmm. Uh, it wasn't meant to be worn as a costume. I think someone actually meant it to be literally worn. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's, I don't I don't know for what reason. But again, it's all about putting titles, uh, putting, putting keywords in your title and in your description. Something that will um, make it stand out. A lot of people are afraid to sell on Poshmark. People that sell vintage because they're like, oh, vintage, it's, it, it's hard to find on Poshmark. Listen, you guys know 90% plus of what I sell is vintage. And I sell on Poshmark, and I do okay on Poshmark. I'm due two to three thousand dollars a month on Poshmark, and my items are not searchable on Poshmark because mm -hmm. you cannot search without a brand name. So it very much uh, is worth cross posting to Poshmark for vintage, regardless of whether you have brand names. Yep. And it sold for the price you see there, sixty-seven dollars. I probably had it um, listed for eighty, and then I usually do with the bot does automatic offers to likers, and that's probably where that odd number came from but very nice very nice and it's lightweight by the way so i probably paid two to three dollars for it in colorado because their bins prices are a little cheaper all right guys i'm very excited about my last sale this was uh this was my uh, bins fine this is a recent bins fine this is like last week or so like a week and a half ago maybe maybe it's been listed for a week I found this, I, it was funny because I was, it was in a bin that had already been like um, crazily gone through by the, all the t-shirt bros, uh, but it was folded up and I could just see this jerseys tag. And um, I've said this a couple times, I see the tag and I know it's a vintage shirt and it's like this kind of like game of like, okay, I'm going to open it up. Is it going to be blank? Is it going to be something dumb? Is, Is it, it going to be, be something really cool? Ugly reunion t-shirt. <laughs> Yeah, and I opened it up, and it was a freaking boxing t-shirt. I was so excited from 1993. I was super stoked about it. I think there was only one other one listed, um, and it was listed for like 120 or something like that on eBay. Um, but I listed it. It took like maybe a week or so. I sold it to uh, somebody in the Netherlands. So that's, this is my Netherlands sale. I was so excited. Look at those guys. $180 going to the Netherlands. I paid a dollar for it. Nice. How is that for some freaking ROI? Nice. So it's good. Yeah, I was really very, good. very, very happy. Okay. Uh, we are running a little late, but that's okay because we still need to get into the third part of our show. This is where we talk about our goals. We talk about what goals we set last week. So I know for one thing, we both set the goal of going to the bins at least three times. Did we do that? No, we went twice. No, we went three. Did we? Mm-hmm. Oh, I guess we did hit three times. <laughs> Good grief. I was looking in the chat. Sorry, I was looking at Mikey says the feeling is mutual. Can't gift the great sellers because Shelly said she loves you $20 worth, Mikey, but not $80 worth. Listen, <laughs> I'd buy Mikey $80 worth of dinner any day of the week. He's my bud. I love him. 
But yeah, give it an eighty dollars shirt away. No, I probably wouldn't do that. I probably wouldn't do that. Uh, do I need but to? Do vice I, versa, I don't think he would do that either. Do I need to go back to the tales from the crypt thing that I that Vicky found that mm-hmm. she was mad that I bought it from her for the price she wanted? True. Just true. because it took away her ability to actually list it online. It's true. So listen, us resellers, we're a little bit weird about. I things. was going to say we are weird. <laughs> we're weird. Okay, uh, so we did go to the bins three times. Mm-hmm. We did get two videos up we did this last week okay so that those we did those how did you do as far what were what were your listing goals my goal this week was 150 items listed 150 new listings i did not make that goal uh i did 115 okay still not shabby right 115 new listings um i did not work the full seven days although i did get something listed every single day i got a minimum this my my lowest number was yesterday where i got 10 listed yeah um and and i'm going to do another 20 when we're done here so i think that was that was good um it wasn't great the previous week i had wanted to do like 250 and i was like i came close i did over 200 yeah i think i did like 230 something last week sustainable goal uh but again it has to be a goal that i think i can reach like katie katie for me, I do like a higher goal, so I have something to achieve for. I'm not going to say I'm going to do 50 because 50 is too easy, and I'm, I'm definitely going to do 50. I would like to also say 150 for this week again. Yeah. So you, now you, you got to remember, though, that Vicky has somebody who is doing taking pictures and doing listings for her. Correct. So once every, like how often are you, you know, she did, she did have to take a bunch of pictures last week, but mm-hmm. when it comes to clothing, she's not doing any of those pictures. For me, I have to take pictures of everything that I list. So... If I'm doing this weekly, like this week, I took pictures of 75 items. So I got to take pictures. I got to take measurements. Then I got a list. I was worried I wasn't going to hit my 50 this week because I did have to do a bunch of photography and stuff. Um, But I actually was able to do 56 listings. So I didn't meet my goal. Um, If you were just going off of the stuff that you actually have to photograph yourself and then list, you would have it. It would be a very different goal. It would be. It would be. Um, Now, if I were just, but I mean, here's the thing. The person that's doing photography and and the listing for me is is doing about 75 items a week. I mean, that's crazy. So it's still me doing just as much as that person because then I'm also... Um, all I'm doing for the most part is tweaking titles and doing the pricing. The listings yeah. are very good. Uh, and sometimes I'm going to, I'm cropping photos depending on, on the item, but for the most part, I'm just tweaking the titles and, and, you know, measurements and all that information is already there. The description, um, actually she's excellent and getting better week by week with the, with the description and putting in the keywords. Um, as someone who was not listing a lot before, this is actually, I, I, I'm very pleased and it's been a great, um, a great thing for for both of us i think so um you know not everybody's my crystal my, right so you know my crystal's my unicorn so crystal's crystal's pretty hard to replace i have to say my other lofty goal that i set this is the one that i was overly ambitious is i wanted to get the rest of my stuff cross posted onto poshmark i did not even come close to that i was able to add like 150 i'm at 752 um i should have more like 16 to 1700 so I'm going to see if I can finish that up this, this coming week. Uh, you know, I just wasn't able to get there. And I really need to get the rest of them listed because my whole issue is all the stuff that I've listed the last couple of weeks has not been cross-posted to Depop and Grailed and Mercari and Posh because I need to get all of my stuff onto Posh first and then I can go back and it, I'll be in a better place. Um, so I'm going to try this next week to actually get the rest of my Poshmark stuff up. I'm going to stick to my 50 a week. I think 50 is good for me. It's a good goal. If I go over, that's great. But again, every week, pretty much, like I'm going to be out of stuff to list in the next day or two. And then I got to go through the whole process again of, of processing everything and photographing it. And that takes away like a good you know, half day to a day mm-hmm. um, that I could be listing. So Yeah, I mean, I'm washing everything and processing it as well and cleaning all the items as far as... I mean everything. I don't send anything that's not clean um, yeah. to be to be photographed. I do all the hard goods and stuff, and I do have another forty or fifty items to photograph yeah. this week that I haven't done. Uh, Cheryl, I'm super proud of you. Cheryl did really well this week, uh, and and Barb's throwing down the the challenge gauntlet. She's going to do at least fifty plus. Um, Crystal, I love you too. I do miss you coming to visit every single week to pick up and drop off because that mm-hmm. means we don't spend as much time hanging out and catching up. But uh, Crystal's husband, Angel, decided to pop over one day yep. this week just to visit Ripley, his favorite 
favorite puppy favorite puppy in the world so that was nice. um so so please guys feel free to chime in in the chat or if you're watching this after the fact put down in the comments down below how you did with kind of you know what you were hoping to accomplish this last week whether you're successful whether you weren't what your goals are for this coming week like i said i'm going to stick to 50. i'm going to try to get the rest of my poshmark over because i really want to be able to go back and get there like i haven't added anything new to depop in like since i put everything in there so it's been a couple weeks so i really want to get to where i'm actually i haven't added anything to mercari or grail mm -hmm. so i need to get the rest of that poshmark done so i can go back and get it back into a regular routine with my cross posting um we're gonna do our two videos which should be at the very least the video that goes up tomorrow for today's haul and then our wednesday um all day bins challenge so those are gonna be my two things so uh, again bins at least three times at least two videos 50 listings i don't think we're gonna do bins the three times i've got to say if i'm gonna be there if i do the wednesday the wednesday will probably be it for me yeah maybe so i don't know that i'll be doing bins any other time um i think that will be it for me Okay, so we'll say probably two days this week is, is going to be our... Minimum two days. I yeah. mean, maximum two days, I should say. Because all day, I should be able to fill two freaking carts if I'm there for eight hours. That's true. So, um, Caleb, Caleb, Caleb Dibbs, I'm sorry, asked if we promote high. Uh, we both do things a little bit differently. Um, I do promoted listings on, um, on eBay. I always have. I've been using it for seven years or so, as long as promoted listings has been out in beta. Um, right now I'm using the dynamic promoted listings, which is basically just, um, it used to be called trending rate and now it's dynamic and I use dynamic and I cap it at 8%. Um, so definitely there. And, Mine's at um, 12 right now, but cap at 12. Yeah. And Hey, Michelle is in there. Liz has been kicking butt, uh, yep. and Liz is going to go burn down her local Lowe's. Uh, <laughs> for those of you that don't know, oh, Liz what a has nightmare. been renovating her kitchen for, I think and it's going on now. three months now, kitchen and bath. And they have made so many damn mistakes with her renovation. Every, every order being cabinets, wrong countertops, and... everything has been wrong, broken, misaligned multiple deliveries and re-deliveries i swear she's got to own her local low soon seriously blow it up or i i'm not exactly sure but they should be paying her to put her cabinets in at this point um i don't know how she's yeah 758 years so far she's been renovating pretty much yeah yeah when you go to set up uh tracy when you go to set up a or edit your um promoted listings campaign It'll, you can either put in a set amount or you can do dynamic and then you can cap it if you want to. Uh, I don't really know how to explain it any, way, any different way than that, but it just has to do with setting up your promoted listings. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't automatically add my stuff into promoted listings and I think that's what- um, I do. What Noelle is saying. I don't add my stuff in automatically. I will, everything that was you know listed for a while, I just changed it like a week or two ago. Um, I put in and do, you know, put it in, in promoted listings. And then I'll wait a few weeks because a lot of stuff sells early or fast if it's good. So um, why am I gonna pay extra? And because I sell vintage, honestly, I don't have a ton of competition for things being exactly sure. the same. However, eBay has become a pay to play platform as far as ad and revenue rates. I mean, yeah, it is yeah. what it is. It's, you know, the last nine quarters in a row, eBay's earnings report has shown that they their earnings are down and they are only up in ad revenue. Uh, and clearly based on a lot of the campaigns that are happening, eBay's shareholders that run the company, basically who tells them how to make things work, the shareholders are only looking to increase that ad revenue and increase the revenue in general by whatever way they have to. And right now it's off the backs of the sellers. Yeah. So it sucks. We are in a pattern where eBay is not seller friendly. It is what it is. It has happened before. It will go back around at some point under new leadership or when something changes. But right now it is what it is. It's their platform. You have to pay to play and you just have to either account for, um, you know, a, a lower ROI on your items, a higher, you know, higher profit, a lower profit margin. It is what it is. It yeah. does, it's not great. I'm not defending it by any stretch of the imagination. However, I'm still doing six figures on eBay and, um, you know, lower than I have in the last couple of years, but you know, it's the still the biggest national platform out there, international platform out there. So yeah. you can either limit yourself 
uh, or you can figure out a way to work around, as we've been talking about for several months now, trying to different changes in the platform. Yep. And yeah, and Liz is like, it's just whatever at this point. It is what it is. It's not, I'm not happy about it. No one's happy about it. Uh, you know, my... Well, I think she's talking about her remodel. Oh, her remodel. <laughs> that too. That too. But it's been, um, you know, in, in general, listing on eBay and selling on eBay has been a challenge for the last 18 months, if not longer. Yep. And, and I think it's going to continue to be for a while and it's going to get worse before it gets better. Um, so, yeah, Liz says it fits for both. It does. It's, it's just, it is what it is. It's not, it's not a seller-friendly platform at the moment. It has been for many, many years and, and, and probably will be again, but it's going to change when shareholders change or when upper-level management changes. And it's not, and I'm not saying that the people that are in charge right now are bad people. I just think they have to do what the shareholders tell them to do because that's who pays their yeah. salaries. So, yep. Um, All right. It is what it that's is, a good guys. Way to, that's a good way to wrap this up, guys. Uh, thank you so much for coming and hanging out with us. It's so overcast and like windy outside. Um, I'm going to go get me a little snicky snacky, and then I'm going to get some listing done before I'm gonna we have, call it I'm going to have, as Cheryl called it, lupper. Uh, a late lunch, early supper, lupper. Oh, you're hungry right now? You're ready to go? It's 3 o'clock. I haven't eaten anything today. I've yeah. had water and coffee. Fine. I'm hungry for frick's Fine. sake. Fine. Fine. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much, and we will see you soon. Don't forget, we'll have a sourcing video out tomorrow, and Wednesday is going to be our all-day bins challenge. So if you're in Vegas, come hang out with us at the bins. We will be there all stinking day. Well, at least she will be. Well, I will be anyway. All right. Bye. <laughs> Bye.